friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and this is Jub Jub and she is a lizard. But you knew that, didn't you? Even if you didn't know what a tegu is, it's pretty obvious from her overall morphology that she is a lizard, right? Scaly skin, longish body shape, four legs, eyes, ears, tails, her head, everything. You get it. She is a lizard. But when is a lizard not a lizard? When it is one of the most amazing and weirdest, most incredible reptiles on the planet, the Tuatara. With the exception of Agatha, our red-footed tortoise, all of the reptiles in my care are technically lizards. Most of those lizards are snakes. Yeah, that's right, snakes. That might be surprising to some of you, I, I know, but please hold off in the comments telling me that I'm wrong. Just wait, I'll get to it in a bit, hold on. So for clarity's sake, when I talk about lizards in this video, I'm referring to what is traditionally viewed as a lizard. By that definition, I have five lizards. Jub Jub here, that you've already met, lovely little girl. Then I have Rosa, my bearded dragon, and three geckos, Daisy, Arthur Morgan, and Night Monkey. If you follow me on Instagram, you should know these guys pretty well. While they are all very different in appearance and behavior, they are all still very recognizable groups of lizards. There are, of course, other groups of quadrupedal reptiles, which are very distinctive in appearance from lizards. Turtles and tortoises most obviously have a shell. The morphology of crocodilians are instantly recognizable as not lizards. But take a look at this guy. This is a tuatara. Sure looks like a lizard to me, but it isn't a lizard. So how is this a lizard and this a lizard, but this is not? Good question. Let's find out, okay? Together. Tuatara are scaly gray, brown, or green reptiles between 18 to 30 inches long with spiny protrusions down their back. They're super cute and prototypically lizard looking, wouldn't you say? but they are in fact the sole surviving member of an ancient order of reptiles called Rhynchocephalia that originated more than 20 million years before the first dinosaur and diverged from the group which evolved into modern snakes and lizards over 250 million years ago. That's at least 100 million years before the snakes branched off from the rest of the lizards. These guys are old. Rhynchocephalians thrived across the globe for eons, frolicking with the dinosaurs until about 65 million years ago when they, along with just about everyone else at the time, had a really bad day. That is... Wah, wah. And with the exception of the lonely Tuatara hanging out in what is now New Zealand, the entire order went extinct. Bummer, eh? Those that survived the, well, the apocalypse on their island refuge are two geographic variants of a single species of tuatara. The northern tuatara, Sphenodon punctatus punctatus, and its subspecies, the brothers island tuatara, Sphenodon punctatus gunferi. If you were to compare tuatara fossils from tens of millions of years ago to either of these two variants, they would look pretty much exactly the same which is why you might hear them be described as living fossils. This highly inaccurate term is meant to imply that these animals were, by virtue of not evolving, somehow left behind by evolution. Evolutionary leftovers, if you will. But the truth is actually the exact opposite. Animals sometimes experience a random mutation, and if that mutation improves an animal's chances of not dying before mating and passing on its genes, it will pass on to the next generation, who will now have the trait themselves, or at least have the ability to pass that trait on to their offspring. That's evolution. Basically, if an organism needs to adapt, it will either evolve or it will die off. The tuatara not evolving since the time of the dinosaurs and still kicking around today means that they are winning. Their morphology hasn't changed, not because evolution forgot about them, but because it hasn't needed to. As weird as they are, and it is quite weird, they have been perfectly suited for their environment for millions of years. So let's see how they compare to modern reptiles and see where these guys go on the reptile tree. Hopefully you're going to be seeing a cool flowchart that moves along with what I'm saying here. Do you even know how to make a flowchart? 
Uh, no, but Dad does. Seriously? I'm sure he'll do one for me. No, I won't. Okay, well, if I successfully bribe my dad with a cigar or a plate of poutine, you'll be seeing a fancy flowchart. Otherwise, you'll just have to make do with a phylogenetic tree up and you'll have to follow along. But I am very confident that there will be a nice chart for you. You shouldn't be. Oh, you like poutine, don't lie. Okay, let's start with Reptilia, which is made of two main groups. Lepicidomorphs, which include all modern lizards, snakes, and the tuatara. And the other group is Archosauromorphs, which include turtles and tortoises, maybe. Apparently there is some uncertainty or debate on that, but for now let's just leave them there. Also among the Archosaurs are crocodilians and dinosaurs. Some of those dinosaurs split off and became our favorite feathery reptiles. Birds! Let's jump to the other side of the tree and check out the Lepicidomorphs. They divide into two main groups, the Rhynchocephalians, which by the way translates to beakhead, just thought that, that was funny, of which our awesome Tuatara is the sole surviving member. Then there are the Squamates, which is the second most successful group of vertebrates on the planet by the way, and includes all our modern lizards and snakes. When you look at the Squamates group in detail, we see how snakes are actually lizards. The first modern lizards that branched off are the geckos, then the skinks, then the teids like Jub Jub, then the snakes, and then most recently the iguanas, agamids, beaded lizards, and monitors. The closer the creatures are to the split or the nodes, the more closely related they are. So monitor lizards are much more closely related to snakes than they are to geckos or skinks, or even tegus, who many people confuse with monitors. So if geckos and skinks down here are lizards, tegus over here are lizards, and then the iguanas and monitors that the snakes split off of are lizards, then the snakes, smack dab in the middle of this nonsense, would have to be lizards too. To borrow an analogy from Clint from Clint's Reptiles, if snakes are not lizards, but all these other reptiles are, it's kind of like saying that my cousin in Montreal and I are related, but my sister and I are not. It just doesn't work that way. I hope that makes sense without knowing exactly what the diagram looks like. It's hard to know if what I'm showing on screen is lining up with my mouth sounds. Clint does a way better job of explaining this than me. You should definitely go check out his video on standing up for reptiles and his phylogeny video on his second channel, Clint Explains. In any case, as you can see with two Taras branching off way down here, they're pretty far removed from the rest of our modern reptiles and they truly stand alone. Yeah, we really need a flowchart. Yeah, you really need to edit this out, I think. We'll see. Okay, Jub Jub is being a bit mischievous and isn't in the best of moods right now, so we're going to switch her out for someone who's a little bit more closely related to the topic of today's video. Okay, so we switched over here to Night Monkey because, like I said, Jub Jub was a little bit rangy, and she is much more closely related to Tuataras on the tree. I need to refer back to it. Here it is. Just put it up on the screen. And I think that's enough on the Tuatara's lineage. Sorry if that got too much into the weeds. What I do on my channel is part of my homeschooling, so I do need to present the what I learned here bit too, just so that my parents can evaluate it, you know? Okay, so let's take a look at the physiology of the Tuatara. I covered their general appearance and size earlier, but Let's dive into just how very distinct from lizards they are. Let's start with the old beak head, which doesn't actually have a beak, but it does have a bony beak-like protrusion. Looking inside the mouth, you will see a completely toothless mouth. Yep, completely toothless mouth. Yeah, I know you think that you thought that you saw a bunch of teeth in there, but you did not see what you think you saw. Instead of rocky mouth pegs that attach to the jawbone like us and most other amniotes, Tuatara have serrated jawbones that act as teeth. The teeth you see are actually bone protruding through the gums. They have a single row of serrations on the bottom jaw that fit perfectly between the double row on their top jaw, making their jaws like a set of shears. Tuatara bites are no joke. Because they are made from bone as opposed to super hard on animal, as Tuatara's age, 
that bony protrusions wear down and eventually become ineffective as a toothy analog. When this happens, the tuatara's diet is limited to squishier foods like slugs or worms, and with a probable lifespan of over a hundred years, I can imagine that there's just a lot of tuatara out there just gumming away at their food. Just... <laughs> Another key difference is that unlike lizards, tuataras have no ears. This doesn't mean that they can't hear. They can. It just means that there is no external ear that opens up to the outside world. The internal ears are the most primitive of all reptiles and mammals, lacking an eardrum and a lot of other bits of stuff you would find in a more sophisticated ear. That said, studies show that they can hear sounds between 100 to 800 hertz, which is actually a little better than most snakes who aren't deaf, by the way. That's actually a myth but nowhere near the 20 to 20,000 hertz range that humans can hear. That's not all. Their heart and lungs are more basic than other reptiles, and their spine and parts of their skeleton are actually more fish-like than reptile-like. How's that for a blast from the evolutionary past? I mean, it was something like 400 million years ago when amphibians branched off from fish, and 100 million years later when reptiles branched off from amphibians. That's just a very long time to hold on to that fishy skeleton, but hey, whatever works, right? Speaking of whatever works, another strange fact is that male tuatars don't have hemipenes. That's the reptile equivalent of a penis, but there's two. So, to mate, male and female tuatars kind of just smush their cloacas together. Smooshing booties. Yeah. Which is actually also how most birds do it, too. Birds, as I mentioned earlier, are part of the archosaur morphs on the complete other side of the reptile family tree. And that's not their only archosaur like trait that they have. The plates and structures on their tail are very crocodilian, but unlike crocs, they can drop their tails. They're like a hodgepodge of different animal bits all put together, they're a scaly platypus. And in New Zealand, not Australia. What else sets these guys apart? Well, they have a third or parietal eye. Many lizards and amphibians have a third eye. So it's not really unique in and of itself, but Tuatara's parietal eye is significantly more sophisticated than most other reptiles with a third eye. They are able to resolve images in much more detail. Temperature is another place where tuataras buck the trend. As endotherms, reptiles usually like things pretty toasty so that they can digest their food and regulate their bodily functions. But for the tuatara, temperatures over 28 degrees Celsius, that's about 82 degrees Fahrenheit, are fatal, and they remain active at temperatures just a few degrees above freezing, far lower than what most reptiles can survive at. Pretty cool, eh? See what I did there? Cool. You don't... Really? Why are you being so cold to me? So icy. Yeah. Why are you giving her a cold shoulder? Jump Jump might freeze. Are you... <sighs> so, I think we'd agree that Duotaras are strange, and they have been successfully going about their strange lives in New Zealand for tens of millions of years until, shocker, we showed up. Humans and the animals that we introduced to New Zealand with us have not been great for the tuataras. Rats in particular are a huge threat. Not so much to full-grown adults, but they happily devour the eggs and babies and have been disastrous to the population for centuries, limiting their population to pockets on New Zealand's North Island and on some of the surrounding islands. Climate change is another looming threat. As I mentioned, they can't handle high temperatures and stuck living on an island where they are, it's not like they can just move to colder climates when the temperature rises. Even if temperatures were to stay below the threshold that would be harmful, the sex of their young is determined by the incubation temperatures, with cooler temperatures producing females. So this temperature increase may result in the reduced numbers of breeding females. But it's not all bad news. Over their range, the Tuatara's numbers are doing okay. The Northern Island population is classified as least concerned. The Brothers Island population classified as vulnerable. Not great, not terrible. But we are working hard to help. 25% of the Tuatara population has dropped in the last century, but recent efforts in rat eradication, establishing protected areas, and captive breeding programs have turned that around. 
As of 2005, there are actually two Atara on the mainland of New Zealand, something that hasn't been since the European settlers arrived. There is now an estimated 60 to 100,000 Tuatara in the wild today. We still need to be diligent in their protection and conservation, but for now, it looks like we're doing the right things to save these weird and wonderful animals. If you want to learn how you can help, I'll put some links to some of the organizations working hard on their conservation in the description below. Please go check them out. So what do you think of our beak-headed, bony-toothed, fish, skeletons, three-eyed, earless lizard that's not a lizard? Any New Zealanders out there happy to have a video about your beautiful country that does not involve hobbits in any way? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed learning about these awesome creatures. If you did, please hit that little thumbs up button down there. It really helps the video spread to other people that might like it too. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! I legless, not legless, easy, earless. <laughs> Doesn't have these. It has these. We don't have the answer. Bye. She was stuck on my hand and she couldn't get enough traction. Uh. Mm -hmm. oh, she's just ripping my organs out. It's fine.